The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon Eastern Time, 877-927-6648 is the number to call. And, in fact, I'll be doing two hours today. Larry's not going to be in for the next hour. I think he's on his way to give a class somewhere. So I'm going to be sitting in. And, of course, I don't do quite the same work uh, as Larry, although we very often get the same conclusions in different ways. Um, and I will go through. It will be uh, the Futures Hour. I'll go through a lot of the commodities at that particular point. So let's look at this market here. Giving back a little bit after... Um, spectacular day yesterday now something I've been just discussing here on my show is that there was a particular match let me just go this is what I've been showing my subscribers for at least the past week as soon as I discovered it uh, it happens periodically over the years periodically maybe once a year or once I suppose maybe once every two years maybe twice in three years where you get a price time match but you also get an exact replica of a, like a template from a previous chart pattern. And in this case, what I identified was that although we got the exact high in the S&P, got it in the Dow, but we were already short the Dow from a little bit, about 70 points before the top. But we got the exact high of the S&P to within one point using the Chapman Wave methodology. Uh, went short, took it all the way down to the low and then I said uh, this might be a point where you want to take some profits if you're a swing trader we're going to hold and we held our positions too long we took very small profits after a fantastic gain but instead of switching to the long side we just kept trying to do it and couldn't get it instead what we did is I identified two stocks within the Dow that I thought had f fabulous potential to give us uh, either matching gains or even better gains based on their chart patterns. Unfortunately, we were, we were in those, and they are really doing very, very well. So it's a, it's a, it's a, um, a surrogate, it's a proxy for the Dow, way, way, way less expensive. Uh, no, I shouldn't talk, use the word expensive. Way, way lower priced, and that that's a suited me fine. Um, Meantime, this is what I was looking at, and I'm going to show you something just now. I've got to thank, I've got to thank uh, Steve for reminding me. I have on one of my many, many screens, I have, in fact, one of these uh, charts that I had um, a good friend, Herb, work with me for a long time on, on certain uh, indicators that I developed. And I found over the years I just kept not using them but going back to my original work that I had done way back in the 1980s, uh, as soon as the computers came in and I could find these different things. And I've been using that, those, those same techniques. The simple, I found that the simplest I can keep it, the easier it is. The more complex I made it, uh, the more complex the thinking. And I wanted to filter things out. So I actually haven't looked at that particular actual the technique in its largest form Oh, for ages until I saw Steve come up with something that he's been working on, which seems to be uh, working very nicely. So I thought, hey, whoa, let me just go back, because a lot of it resembles something that I'd done. And uh, lo and behold, I, I will show it in a short while. Meantime, I, I, I use other techniques, which I find have, have really been uh, working beautifully. So um, I try to keep the other stuff in the background, and I, I do it on weekends, perhaps I might... I haven't actually done it for a long time, but usually on a weekend I'll pull up all the major indices and go through it with my different techniques that give me these numbers and all that sort of thing. But I just haven't found that I need to use it. I did identify the low uh, that we made. I just didn't get any I, We did get one position. We got the 300% long the Dow, got stopped out for a 40% loss, and I, I, I tried to get back in, but it was moving so quickly we never did get back in. Um, but I... Uh, that was going to be a counter trend trade to complement, to, to invert what I thought was going to be a longer term trade because the weekly chart really was looking very poor on, the, on, on most of the indices. And in fact, it's only just started to improve. So 
it was my fault. I just I wasn't quick enough. I should have just followed my technique that says buy signal to buy mode, get in and let it go where it's going to go. Finished. Um, so I just wanted to explain something about the way I found that I did not want to continue using those particular techniques that I developed before because there was just uh, there was another aspect to it in my work. I found that sometimes it gave you a fantastic signal, but that signal failed. And if you put too much emphasis on the signal, you could get trapped many often, many times if it turns out to be an H pattern that goes to an M. So that's, that's my thinking, but I've re 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 invigorated it. I'm looking at it. We'll, we'll look at it together in a moment. Let's just run this. You see that the Dow from the low of uh, 24th of June at 14,551 ran up to peak A, B, C, D. That was on its way to doing 14 bars that with our market up until yesterday early before the announcement, was looking exactly the same. Now it's changed its stripes. The 15th bar, that's today, might turn out to be the same kind of a doji, but we're actually at a higher level. Now it's a little bit independent. Now I'm looking at it differently. There's also a technique that I call a Chapman Wave Squash. That's just a way that I look at the stochastic and the MACD, and that's the reason when I got that signal, we took it, we went completely away from shorts, and we were only looking at long positions. All our long positions are doing really well. In fact, one is up, um, I think it's about 28%, something like that, in just a couple of days. And uh, one that we've had is a long-term uh, uh, buy and hold is up from the, the purchase price. Um, it's up about 140%. Uh, that's not a recent one. Now, the recent ones are up very nicely because they're the ones that are participating in the Dow. Can that continue? Well, that's the question, and I'm going to deal with that now because that's a question I've been asked by email and by many people. So let me just quickly run this. This is the Dow pattern. We've broken to all-time highs. There's a peak B today. Finally, if 15,709.58 is not taken out, but the stochastic and the MACD are still really strong, I am not prepared to look at the short side. In the E-mini, it's, it's, it's gone accelerated more. It is in leg D. But the MACD is still very strong. The stochastic is very strong. So I suspect that it will go to like an E and an F as next week we get into the C and the D of the Dow. And then I think we have to be careful. Simple. Meantime, 120-minute chart just gave a peak E-top and says that the nine-period moving average has been taken out I'm looking at this and I'm saying, yep, a consolidation is taking place. I believe it's a consolidation. What I said to subscribers is we might see the high early this morning and then we could drift down into options expiration Friday. Um, we'll see if that works out. Now, here's the other thing. I'm going to run the numbers and I'll just do it here. I'll get, get rid of this and I'll show you something. Look, look at the weekly chart. There's, if any of you remember, Bud Rolfs had spoken about a pattern. It's a rising expanding ice cream cone shape and that's what we've got here in the weekly chart of the s uh, of the e uh, the december e minis but i've renamed this and i'm calling this leg c and that says that at 1717 you've got 1667 as major support in the weekly chart and the up channel the inside track that i would draw right now <laughs> let me just change it to a slightly no oh, keep it thick no 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 i won't i i don't want to do that Wait, change the weight. There you go. That inside track says that kind of coincides and says, yeah, 1671, somewhere around there. That would mean that we're going to get a big smash uh, starting next week uh, to the downside. Now, I shouldn't say big smash after all. It's only going to give back yesterday's gains and the day before uh, and the week before. So, no, it'll be a pullback. It'll be after that. I'm thinking that October is going to be the, the month that you've got to really be careful of. Let's run the numbers, and then we go to our callers. You've got the Dow is minus 27 at 15,649. The S&P is up 0.76 at 1726. The Comp Index is up 1.83 at um, 3785. It's a little bit weak here. Let's see what Apple's doing. Oh, Apple's up 8. Mm, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you've got gold up. They say 66. I am I. Was it was was Europe closed or something like that? It must have been because it's not 66 over and above the 57 of yesterday, or is it? Maybe it. Uh, oh, so yesterday was intraday, 
and then the market must have closed or something, whatever it is. We're at 1366. I'm going to do a lot more of the golds and the silver and all that stuff in, in when I do Larry's Hour next. Meantime, suffice to say that that incredible wick that we see yesterday has 1341 as major support and very strong resistance in the 373 to 3, 13, 13 73 to 1376 area, um, but so far on the weekly basis, if Friday we close above the 9 EMA, that'll be very good. Thank goodness we did get stopped out of our, our gold ETF, our, our low price gold ETF, but we were able to keep our uh, stock that we're in, and that's had a huge gain. So let's see what happens with that. Um, uh, now let's just go to the silveries uh, uh, up. Silver is up 1.7 at 23.31. Platinum is up 10 at 14.75. High grade copper is up 7. Let me just quickly do this HG at HG. I'm going to the continuous contract. Nice, nice. Very important that copper exploded to the upside there. Thank you, Ben. Um, ben, B E N. Let, that, let's see what the chart of Ben is doing. Ben, wow. Huge spike up in Franklin Resources. All right, let's get back to our story. Um, Crude oil is down 30 cents at 107.77. Um, uh, bonds are down half a point, and you've got uh, the dollar up 0.05, and the euro should be up. Euro is E-U-R. I'll do a lot of the currencies, etc. during Larry's show. Very strong leg D in the weekly chart leg E, and we're going to go to Ben in Tallahassee. Ben, how are you? Very good, Basil. How are you doing? Good. Fine. Thank you. Excellent. So, um <clears throat> Well, based on uh, Mr. Bernanke's comments, looks like uh, gold uh, skyrocketed. And I was just wondering if you see that as uh, more of a short covering, or do you think we actually uh, could get a an A, B, C, D on that daily? I noticed that even with the big spike yesterday, the um, the uh, I think it's stochastic is still well under the eighty percent mark. Is that is that correct? It's it's at twenty three percent the stochastic and the GLD. And the MACD is trying to turn up. Okay, let's just do a little analysis of this. Folks, what we're looking at here, I'm going to go, if you don't mind, since you've got a, I, I can, from your question, you've really got a more intermediate term question. Isn't that right? Yeah, I, I, I guess the, the million dollar question is uh, if you would see still now as an entry point. Okay, L let me put it this way. My monthly chart still has a target. I have no idea if it's going to be correct or not, but it has a target of the 100 and, hmm, the 102 level in um, April of 2014. If there's a left side, right side price time match. Actually, I should change that a little bit. Hold on a second. I'd like to be more conservative with it. Uh, this was the longer term that I wanted to do. I'd rather do it more intermediate term. We'll be back with Ben and Tallahassee. We're looking at uh, the GLD, and we're looking at gold, and we'll see what we can do as to whether this is the start of another big move to the upside or not. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of direction funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the direction funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman back. And we're on with Ben in Tallahassee. Ask me about the GLD, which is the gold spider, um, the S&P spider ETF for gold. And um, I'm going to show something here, and I have to thank Steve Fitz for reminding me about this. I just haven't even looked at this for so long, um, but it's something I developed ages ago. <laughs> and as I said, the only reason why I stopped looking at it is that I found that the signals that I get in the methodology I use is so clean that I didn't... I, it, I found that there were false signals that were given by this particular technique, even though when in a look back, they always look fantastic. It is as you are in the trades that it becomes important. So this, what I found is that I found, for my, my own experience, I test these things out for, for weeks and weeks, for, for months sometimes, before I, I call it an official technique. Um, and the reason is that you've got to do it in real time, because real time tells you it's when you look at it on... I'm going to ask any of you out there, on paper, paper trading, didn't you do so much better than in real trading uh, in the beginning? Yeah, because in paper trading, you don't have the emotional uh, uh, emotional baggage that comes with putting on the trade and now watching it either go against you or now it's gone up more than you think. Should you take your profit? Should you hold it? Blah, blah, blah. And in, f in fact, that's the reason why we take these classes. That's why it's important in, 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 in Steve's Master Trader series that he's, he's doing coming up a week from Friday, it's important to be able to put these things together so that you develop methodologies that you didn't, you weren't aware of. And then what you do is you filter out 
until someone else's technique becomes yours. That's the whole thing. You can't turn around and say, oh, is this how Basil would do it? You've got to say, oh, man, I understand the technique, but the way I do it, now I've added something to my own consciousness. It isn't, I always think of my students when, on the clarinet when they were playing, and then they would look at me with a big question mark and say, how did that sound? I would look at them with the same question mark, look like a basset hound, looking there with a furrowed brown. I'd look back at them and say, and I'd shake my shoulders. They must tell me, don't look at me. You are playing it. You are interpreting the piece. You're interpreting the score. You're interpreting the chart. So let's go to the chart. And Ben, sorry for a little preamble there. But what I wanted to say to you is, Based just on this particular set of t techniques that I have in front of me that you're looking at now, if you're looking at Tiger Tiffy, oops, let me just put that up so that I'm also looking at it so that I can adjust whatever it is that needs adjusting. What I'm looking at here is that there are a whole series of moving averages that I've got above. And simply put, the white one at the top, which is now the white one at the bottom, is the one that is really the, the major tide. That's number one. Number two is... If you look at this, the MACD, this is the one that was developed for me by Herb. This is the MACD, and all I've done is I asked him to keep the same set of parameters. Well, he changed, slightly changed some of the parameters. There's still 1226.9, but what he did is he made a little yellow um, area where there was a neutral passage of time and price and changed it from the cyan going up to a yellow band which says that's where you've got to be a little bit careful once it changes to the solid color in this case that pinky color that's on its way down that's the MACD so that says in the monthly chart now I still believe that we, because gold has made a major top I don't think that we will make a major low until I see those gold come those little shops that have sprung up that says buy and sell gold until I see for let or, or for rent signs that's just the way I'm looking at it. That would be the major bottom. That's number one. Number two is there can be fabulous counter-trend rallies. And I suspect that we're right now looking at the potential for a counter-trend rallies. But if I do this, it's 109 is the price that's printed here as key support. So this is between 110.50 to about 109.26. The, the GLD will have very strong support. Um, that's the monthly chart. The weekly chart says 136 area is going to be very strong resistance at 132.71, but the stochastics at 70% and the MACD is in that blue, that cyan color there. That says it's moving quite nicely to the upside. This is my very long term that I developed MACD, and that says it's flattening out, and it should maintain the previous major signal, and in this case, the previous major signal is still the sell signal. So that MACD says, be careful. And then the daily one says, um, nice bounce. And that bounce says, yeah, you could retest the 136 to 137 level. Now I'm going to go to my own charts, and I'll explain what I'm talking about. In the GLD, what we're looking at, so, so you don't have a position at this particular moment, right? Yeah, I'm not correct. Okay, so um, now the idea would be is how you would get in and what you would get into. So give me a moment here. We've got a break coming up, and we've got you you on call, and then we've got Travis on deck waiting in line, and we will be back. The Dow's down 21. S&P's about unchanged. Fantastic action considering yesterday's huge move. I'll be right back. We're looking at the GLD. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com.
With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here. So I'm looking at, I'm saying to myself, the GDX, the gold miners, uh, vector gold, GDX is the gold miners, vectors, gold, what is it called? Market vectors, gold, <laughs> gold miners, ETF, has had a pullback. So I suspect that the GLD, which is gold itself, right, trades at a tenth of the price of gold, is showing us that the gold itself, GC, I just wanted to have a quick look at that. So my longer term outlook says that gold should make a retest or make lower lows. That's the way I'm looking at it. It doesn't have to be much lower lows, but it's going to be disappointing to many people who are in the gold, gold market because that's the way I'm looking at it. The shorter term, meaning the intermediate term, says it's the pattern that I'm looking at, and I would not be surprised to see the M-shaped pattern unfold. And that says, yes, at some point you could rally up to in gold to 1467 on the GLD. That would be equivalent of breaking the 136s and going towards the 137.5 to 138.26 area. So that's up uh, about four points, uh, four to six points from here. So this is what I'm going to recommend. It's really difficult after a spike like this. I don't know if you if you know the technique that I call the uh, single leg A up syndrome, where out of the blue there's a news related spike from a low that goes in a single leg straight up. Sometimes it's a little tiny A and then it goes the B and B's the big leg up. If it doesn't break I, to uh, a new high, yeah. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, I do, and and what would also concern me is that it looked like it. Uh, I can't I can't remember the chart, but it looked like the um, spike went right up underneath the uh, right below the nine EMA on the daily. 
It went just above, but what it did is this. Oh. You know the pattern that I call the in the the uh, falling axe. Those two lines, the uh, a, a downtrend line with a sharply lower downtrend line that looks like yes. uh, uh, a V inverted to the side. Well, that expanding wedge, it stopped right there. This is what I'm going to recommend. If this is really a big move in gold, then you should get some minor pullback to between 131 and 130.20, and then it should immediately start making its way towards the 132.60 area. I think that would be a confirmation. It's filling in gaps, and it's trying to head towards the 134.5, 136 area, where there should be a lot of resistance. But in the meantime, I'm going to make the suggestion. You can do it one of two ways. You can nibble at the GLD here saying, hey, this is, I would prefer the one-tenth the price of the GLD rather than the, the one-tenth the price of gold in the GLD. So in that particular instance, I would go for a pullback and start a position between 131.20 and 130.60 because 130.56 is the 9 period moving average support. You can give it maybe 80 cents below that as a stop on a small position. If, in fact, it pops between Friday and Monday and doesn't give you an opportunity and goes to 133.15 or 133.30, that says this is going to be a stronger move I'm, I'm discussing at this particular point uh, um, um, on the shorter term. That's the very near term. That's why I wouldn't mind if you considered that it's a more, a longer, a potential longer term position. That means over three weeks, it's going to make this H pattern. It could even be four or five weeks that it's in a trading range between 137 and 128 or 129. Starting a little position here saying, look, I got my foot in the door, but I really want to look at it as a definitive potential uh, bigger position. If on the 120-minute chart, which is still a single leg A, it could pull back somewhere to, man, I don't know. I prefer 130.80. And you can give it a one, one and a quarter point stop. That's where I would start looking at it as a position play. At this particular point, it's just tiptoeing in to say, hey, if I've missed the move, I'd like at least part of the move. But I would not get a big position here. That was an emotional spike. My thinking is that, oh, by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, we could, in fact, see a pullback that really tests the 129 to 128 and a half area if, in fact, that was just an emotional spike, and there isn't substance behind the move. The weekly chart, I must say, that's the reason why I originally wanted the position we had in the equivalent of the GLD. Um, but I did put it a stop in, and uh, we got stopped out for a 20-cent gain, big deal. But it, uh, and then it took off uh, you know, yesterday. But at least I have a gold position, and it's done very, very well. So I'd like you to have some position. And you might consider that at this particular point, you get one of the lower-priced gold stocks just to nibble at as a potential, one that you've been watching that's done well, that's pulled back. And that could be lower-priced. You're in it. You at least feel you're in the game. And that way, there's much less financial risk than having the GLD. But that's my thinking, that it's a great move to the upside. If it pulls back more than 50%, it's a single leg A up, and it's just going to be miserable going sideways to down. If it holds very nicely in the 130 to 129 and a half area, and then makes new recovery highs in the daily, that's going to be very good action. I hope that helps you. Yeah, that's excellent, Basil. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for calling. Always appreciate your call, Ben. Let's go to Travis in St. Louis. Hi, Travis. How are you? I'm doing great. Good morning, Basil. Good morning. First You'd of all, like to look for, at? Uh, hey, uh, I want to look at Deckers, but I just wanted to say a uh, big thank you to you. I know I send you several emails sometimes during the trading week, and I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, respond wherever you get a chance. So, well, it's my just pleasure. Prop, and as prop, props to you. Well, uh, thank you. And as you know, if I don't respond right away, uh, it can get, it can get lost. So I always try to respond to people right away. So yes, you'd like to look at. Uh, I'm currently long deckers using some October 6250 call options I picked up on Tuesday for uh, I think a dollar and a half. So I got them pretty rather cheap, but I'm, I've got it at leg C in the weekly, leg C in a monthly, and I'm not sure if I'm in a B on a daily. Um, but I'm thinking that this stock has a chance to maybe break out here up towards 6566, uh, which would be a nice gain on the calls. But I just wanted to get your opinion on it. 
Okay, folks, we're looking at Decker's Outdoors. It's a stock that had a fantastic run. It was the stock for a long time, right up to the high of uh, October of 2011. We went to 118.90. Had a little bit of a pullback. A pullback to exactly the 200-period moving average in the monthly chart. This is the third time that it's done that. Oh, I wish I'd, I had... You know, I did see it, but I wasn't interested in it because I thought it was a dead stock. At 567, 564, back in November of 2005, it hit that line. Boom, it ran up into ABCD, a peak D, top and pull back. Where did it pull back to again after that? It went to a low of 13.40... 12.41, March of 2009. That's when the major market made a slow, and it went to peak A. Oh, whoops. Peak B... Peak, oh, Basil, you're not supposed to do that. C, D, uh, give me one second here. I'm making a little modification. I missed a peak, 42, 42. Ah, okay, that's fine. So this is going to be brand new buy mode there. Uh, give me one second. I'd like to correct these as I see them. I don't want to have bad charts here. That's A, B, C, D, oh, isn't that interesting? E and a perfect peak F right there. E, F. All right, I'm done there. And what does it do? It goes all the way to 100, what did I say? It was 18 something, 118.90. with the round numbers. Yep, the previous month had a high of 105 round number and 97 low, no, low after the high. Those round numbers were really important. It plummets down to where? 28. 28.53 in October of 2012 announced peak A, peak B, a leg C. I have to call this a counter trend move, even though stochastics at 80% and the MACD is expanding. So in the meantime, good action on the monthly chart. Month is not finished, so let's go to the weekly chart. I, too, have the weekly chart in peak C if by tomorrow there's no high above 62.89. That would allow for the week after to probably see leg D. The MACD is good. Stochastics at 86%. That's good. Now it's the daily. Now I'm going to look at this chart, and I love to say stocks give you the character of its trading um, frame. So in this particular instance, it makes these scoops. You see how it keeps going into a, like a V or a cup shape? And it goes right back and either makes a new high, pulls back. It's a stair-step move. Very difficult. Now, one thing about the Chapman wave, it can give you a peak A to B to C to D, but it doesn't mean you to say that you can stay in the trade. Look, if you got into this trade, the low is 52.68 on the 26th of July. It runs up to 59.58, and then it pulls back quite sharply, but not that sharply, to the 56th round number low on the 19th, and then it goes to peak B on the 21st of 61.53, but it pulls back where? To 56.42. 56.42 is 42 cents above that peak B um, initiation of the start. So you could easily have been taken out there, and then it runs all the way to D, pulls back, and now it's in a minor uh, retracement, I call it the gray, gray letter A, whoops, gray A, gray B. Why? Because it's underneath the previous major high, and if it does go above f uh, 62, is that a 62? 6289, if it goes to 6290, I would immediately call that E slash, if it's this leg, B or E slash C, giving a preference to E because it keeps making this cup formation. Now, three out of the four, one, two, three. Three out of the four have gone to new recovery highs. You can even call that one there. You could say four out of five. That means that you've got a, a, a percentage predominance to making slightly higher highs and then pulling back. I think you're right that the, the technicals thus far, let me just grab this here, and yet just for fun, let me pull up this chart here, and I'm going to do... Uh, what are we looking at your deck? D E C K. Let's see what my chart here says. Daily says 6309 will be the resistance, and it's at 62.06. Monthly, uh, the weekly says 6397 to 6485 is very serious resistance, and the monthly chart says 6886. So, given that, I'm suspecting that there will be a new recovery high. I, it's an option. So you will grab your profit. Is that what you're going to do the moment it gets to maybe just above the 
the peak I call it peak D right now? Yeah, it's strictly a trade. I mean, I got the option cheap enough, and you know how those work. I mean, they they expire on you. So I've only got four weeks on this call. So I mean, I'm I'm just I'm in it for the next uh, several days if I can oh, get top you, over oh, this the, is, this is, this the is not September. Level. This is not September. This is October. Yeah, I got October's for a dollar and a half. Oh, to very. You know so. what? I think fabulous. I like that. I think you have got a beautiful, beautiful position. Let let it tell you. I'm going to do one thing. If it breaks in the in the daily above uh, sixty two eighty nine, if you have enough, take something off at that point. Reward yourself because what it's done is the, if it does it by Friday, you've extended leg C. If it does it by next week, you've got leg D unfolding. The technicals are still good, and you've taken some profit, and you can hold the rest. And I would have a stop on the rest if at any point, including tomorrow. If it breaks under 61, around about 6140, I'd say, whoa, be a little careful now. It might be struggling. Uh, but it is in October, so you've got, you do have time. Hey, that is really not good thinking with the October because that allows you to, to trade the weekly. I love to look at time frames, and you've done just that. Travis, good eye. All right. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate the help. Thank you very much for calling. I always appreciate that. Let's go to Mike in Long Island. Mike, how are you? Good, Basil. Um, yeah, that was a good trade by Travis. Um, BCE. So this is B for boy, C E, and the B C. Bell Canada, Bell Bell Canada. Yeah, Bell Canada Enterprises. B -B. So that's made a peak D in the monthly chart, trading at BCE at forty two sixty nine. It's down four cents. It's above the old high. The old high was back in two thousand and seven at forty four point fifty nine. It's made a new new recovery high. Of 48.06, all-time high, I should call it. Here's my issue with this. I don't quite know how the telephone companies, this is one of the telephone companies, I believe, work in Canada. But if I'm looking at the chart, let me just quickly do, oh, I thought I'd do it quickly. Let me do it from here. I just want to look at the last buy signal to buy mode, and that's an A to a B to a C to a D to an E. That's a doji high. And then it pulls back with that very long wicked candle right there. I can't put an up arrow yet. Oh, single leg A to the, no, it's an A to a B. That's good. Okay. So is this a position that you have or you're looking at or you want to do something or you have no, you have a feeling but you don't quite know whether you want to go long or, or short? What's the story? Uh, this is a position that I have and I'm worried. I think, uh, you know the monthly chart looks terrible to me, and uh, this looks like it's 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 not worth keeping right here. Okay, so I've got a recommendation that says in within the context of the the daily chart, the pattern that you know I look at very often. First of all, I just put this the rectangle in and say this is trapped within a rectangle. Then what I do is I do the arch formation, the the lowercase h. Then I go to another one and I say okay it's very easy it's it's hugging the 200 period exponential moving average if it's able to climb above the doji high of PD at 4369 all you need to do is raise your stop on some part of the position and if it breaks underneath 4189 you're absolutely right this is starting to fail let me just look at the weekly chart and I'll be back with that in a moment we've got Mike in Long Island looking at uh, Bell Canada Enterprises, BCE, and, and we'll be back. Dow's down 30, s and down 2. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN.
On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.6% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. And all six of those winning trades had been initiated no earlier than just the previous month. With the 600th weekly Gold Report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began, and right now you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market provides trading opportunities after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Questions are the answer. You want a better life? Ask a better question. My driving force in life is how can I become the intelligence behind financial freedom? It's why I take massive action. It's why I've invested over 10,000 hours and thousands of dollars to create the answer, the ultimate money machine. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, and on Friday, September 27th, I'll be hosting a one-day online master trader course, The Ultimate Money Machine, where I'll teach you the exact same trading strategies that I use every day when trading the markets and advising my newsletter subscribers. Learn how to precisely identify the market's next move, when to pull the trigger by letting the market commit to you before you commit to it, and how to manage your trade to maximize your results, just as we did in the month of August, when I advised my newsletter subscribers of 11 new trades, resulting in one loss and a combined profit of 129%. Our next move, it's days away. The cost of this course, $595, less than $2.50 per trading session over the next year. If you're looking for the answer, it's the ultimate money machine. All the details on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. I just want to pause in some news here that, uh, let's see, two things that were quite important, I thought. One is that it was mentioned here in the den that, if I can find it, it disappeared, that deck, uh, uh, Peak D says, deck, big short position. Yeah, so the, yeah, that, it could be part of the, I, I don't see it in the stock, but as a short position cover, that that says, uh, that could push it higher. That's number one. Number two is, just hearing uh, uh, Tommy Jr.'s uh, voice on the on the ad a few moments ago, thrilled to hear from the, from Tom that uh, Tommy's starting to do real well. We miss him here, and just the very best wishes from us, uh, Tommy, in uh, regaining your health and your strength, and uh, Yes, wishing you a very, very speedy recovery. So uh, let's go back. We've got uh, Mike online. We're looking at BCE. I'm going to make this really easy because I don't want to get in the way of a stock that has the potential to rebound, even though I think that rebound is going to be curtailed between 44 and 45 and is trading at 42.69 right now. Two points in a longer-term position doesn't make that much difference but it allows you to stay in the trade as perhaps the technical start to improve. That means I would suggest to you that part of your position should have a stop underneath the low that was made a few days ago at 41.89. I would say at 41.50, I, I would hesitate to say on a closing basis, but I, if it gets into the 41.60s, I'd be a little bit careful, but if it touches 41.50, 
That's where I would say I believe that the upside is now very limited, even if the downside is just limited by two points or so, because it's, it's just money, and I don't think the dividend is worth holding. If it's going to drop two points, that's going to knock the dividend for a loop. So my thinking here is that about a point and a, about a point or so down, and I'd, I'd say, you know what, start lightening up. But here's the other thing. If it gaps up and it makes a little island reversal by popping for whatever reason <laughs> in the next couple of days, and it gets into the gap of about 43.12 to 43.22, that part of the position that you would have taken off before can have a trailing stop and make that trailing stop about a one and a quarter point trailing stop. That's the way I would play it right now. Where would I get out of the entire position? I would get out of the entire position if, for any reason, the market continues running into next week, and this thing just keeps sliding. It might mean that at the end of next week or sometime next week, if I get a sell signal, not a sell mode, just a sell signal in the general market, that the uh, this dividend kind of play starts to activate and, and, and work very well. That's why I'm saying a portion of your position you've got to consider as just lightening up if it takes out maybe that 4160s, 41.50 area. But the core position at this particular point, I think you're safe in that it's bouncing rather than breaking down. And it has the potential for one more move in, in the weekly to go to leg C and then stop dead at the top of the candle of the 21st of June, 4409 area. Hope that helps you. Yep. Thank you, Basil. And thank you. Good call. Good eye on this one. And, and congratulations for holding it this long. Now, let's just do this, folks. I'm going to be doing Larry's show next. I'm going to be doing as much as I can in currencies. I'm going to be doing as much as it's, it's a futures program. Larry's not here. Uh, it's not my purview. It's just that I do an analysis on whatever moves in the Chapman wave. So I'm doing it on a purely uh, theoretical basis. Uh, I don't trade the commodities. I do trade the e-minis, but I don't, uh, I don't do anything with the uh, commodities. So I'll be looking at it based on the Chapman wave methodology. I'll come back to gold, I'll come back to silver, we'll look at copper, we'll look at the euro, the dollar, etc. In the meantime, the Dow is very strong support at 15,570 to 15,550, and this should be peak B today. I'm still expecting a leg C, maybe it happens on, if it happens tomorrow, and then peak C on Monday, leg D on Tuesday, I'm getting close to some kind of a short-term sell signal. Let's stay tuned, and I'll be back. And don't forget, on Wednesday, Wednesday coming up is... Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.